We ran into Harry, and Harry's like, I got a generator, you guys want it? If you can get it running, you can have it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Storm's not here yet, but we gotta winterize this stuff. Patchy's up first. I think we're gonna keep the brute unwinterized because we're gonna put it in the building while it's, uh, you know, 20 degrees out Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. So leg arm just pulled up the Apache. We're gonna go through and drop all the filters, take some of the nozzles off, just drain every little bit of fluid we possibly can of this thing so nothing freezes. And then go put it away probably till next year. It is actually slightly raining right now and the wind is starting to blow. So the storm is moving in, so it's time to do this. So how this goes down, we take off end caps and hoses on the ends of every one of these, these tubes here. And that way when we wing it up, all the little bit of, well, chemistry or water, we want to call it, it's in there, it's going to flow out. We'll collect that. And then on these filter housings here, I got to screw every one of these five bodies off, take the filter out, put it in a bucket, and then put that inside too. And then there's a main filter and then I open every valve up on the sprayer and that lets everything drain through. There is a way you can pressurize the system. This one isn't really set up for that. We tried to get it to go and it can do it, but the newer sprayers you can just plug an air hose in and literally just pressurize the sprayer and it'll blow everything out, which is pretty convenient. But we've done it with this way, with this one for a while now and it seems to work pretty good. Some people will put a little bit of antifreeze in your system, that will work too. Just also got to make sure you drain the pump too because there's a low spot on that and if you don't drain the pump you're probably gonna have a cracked pump housing by spring so let's make sure we do that too As I mentioned in a previous video, we're short on space on this farm. We have buildings, two of them are full of grain and peas, so that kind of messes up some of our equipment storage. But the other two, or I guess three that we have that are available, uh, they just need to be organized better because there's room in there. It's just got a, like a jigsaw puzzle. Got to put the equipment in in the right way so that you can fit more in there. So we're gonna go down to the one building and clean it up a little bit, move a couple tires around and just kind of shift stuff around, a couple trucks I need lined better, and then we can get the Apache in there, we can possibly get a couple more items in that building before the snow comes. So I'm heading there right now, I got some jumper cables, a battery, we're gonna start an old spray pickup, get it out, so we can get the Apache in, and then put it back in and close the door. And there's a little bit of metal that's starting to peel off the side of the building, it's a really old building, the aluminum sided, very thin aluminum that's not very durable, so I'm bringing an impact gun, some uh, metal screw, roofing screws, and I'm gonna go and go ahead and tighten that up a little bit. Let's roll. If that doesn't make sense to you, make sure you watch this video. We shot a turkey at that wall and a bowling ball out of a cannon. It was pretty cool. There's a video on the link up here. A little card pops up. If you want to go to there, click it. Kind of a fun video. You might like it. Here's what I was talking about that door. See? That's really, 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 really cheap siding that was used on this building from some previous owner at some point in time. It's very dark in here too, by the way. We did an equipment tour a couple of weeks ago, months ago actually, and we showed that we have a spray truck here. It's like a 60 foot summer sprayer on an old Dodge. Power ramp, kind of a cool pickup, runs pretty good, but it needs to get out of here so we can rearrange its trucks, move stuff around to fit a couple more items here. Leg arms is in the Apache coming. I'm gonna open this door up right here, get the trucks out, start doing this business, get out of here, get done, and uh, go to YouTube so I can watch other people's videos. So I'm taking the Apache down to uh we call it the Kovach building. We got our two trucks in there and uh, there's room for this Apache. We winterize it and uh, I guess we're gonna put it away because we probably won't be using it again this year until next spring. So, might as well put it away in a building that we have available for this, so. But I do wish that those combines right there had a place to be. I hate seeing those things outside, but you just gotta do what you gotta do. All right, let's go move some stuff. Nick's gonna get in there and he's gonna crank it over. I'm gonna shoot a little ether no, in it. Not. Yes, he is. He's, lying. he's gonna do it. 
He's gonna run it. He's full of it. Okay. All right, go ahead and try it. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Good old trustworthy. We bought that truck for like, uh... he is so needy. He always wants something. Ooh, this one smells really good. That mouse. I bet you there's no mice in that one. All right, go right over here and uh, gonna shoot some ether in it. All right, go ahead. There we go. It's a Dodge pickup with a 360 motor in it, four speed manual. I'm gonna try to throw a battery in it and see if I can get it to start up and then drive it out of here and reposition it so we can get the Apache in here. I don't know, we'll see if it starts. Friday, the day before the storm. They're talking record cold, record snowfall, and probably record power outages of the area. I'm kind of looking at these things more going, hmm, maybe we will actually get to use some snowmobiles this year. Our uh, sprayer mobile, still got some fine tuning to do on this thing. I haven't quite figured out the chemical storage, but she's gonna run strong. But no, the real reason why I'm walking over here, because as we prepare for the storm, we might lose power. They're talking some freezing snow. And if that happens, then what happens out in the farm is where our line is. We're on such the tail end of the transmission line that by the time they finally get to fix ours, it could be a week or two. I was one time growing up, I remember we didn't have power for two and a half weeks, had to run a generator. Well, we really don't have a good generator on the farm. We've been talking about getting a bigger one here. We need to do it. Uh, we just haven't gotten to that point yet. But I got this old girl right here. It's an old Bricks and Stratton. I think it's like a 7,500 watt. Not like a huge generator, but it runs good. It just needs maintenance done to it. And we have a couple other generators like that one on our service truck, another little one that we wheel around. So it's not like we don't have access to power, but the question is now we have three homes on this farm that have refrigerators, furnaces, and water pumps that need ran. And I don't know if that's gonna be enough to run all that, but let's get it out, get it serviced, get it maintenance, get it running. So that way we at least have something, whether we have to rotate house to house to house, <laughs> you know, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Maybe we won't lose power and we'll be okay. And that's what I'm hoping. So I'm gonna get that out of here, get that generator going and then uh, make sure she's good to go. Let's roll. Well, it's all washed off, gas tank is cleaned out. It's got new oil in it, um, but I noticed the class bulb on the butter of the fuel, base of the fuel filter, strainer, uh, is leaking real bad, the old gasket was shot. So I got a round O-ring here, it used a flat one. I'm gonna see if I can get it sealed with the round, but that's all I have in the shop. So let's see if we can uh, get this in there. All right, well, it's not leaking anymore. So I think that gasket's held. So that's good, that O-ring I mean, not gasket, O-ring. So I've got the fuel turned on. There's fuel going to the carb. I got a little bit of gas inside here. I'm gonna go to town. I'm gonna buy some ethanol free gasoline for these engines. Plus we need some on the farm to put in all of our engines when we winterize because, well, we all know what happens to these small engines and carburetors when uh, you leave that kind of gas in them. So we'll get some good gas to put in them for the winter, but I might as well run the good gas in this too to make sure it's reliable. I guess we're about to the point where we can try firing this thing up. You wanna try to start it? All right, let's start yanking on it. It does have a starter but the cables are gone to hook to a battery. So I'm just gonna pull it. We'll see if I break the cable. Hopefully not. Looks like the pull start mechanism is uh, coming apart in the inside. So I gotta take that off and look at that.
Looks like the cable got bound up in the wheel here, so right there it's caught, but it's pretty frayed. I wouldn't want to trust this rope. And I think it's gonna break off when someone gives it a big tug like probably I was about to go do, so let's put a new rope on it. shut the gas off. So I just gotta get some good gas for this thing. We'll have a bunch on hand. I really think we might change the exhaust on it too. Put a muffler on it. That's a little better than that thing because that thing barks. That's not even a muffler. It's more of just a flash hider for the fire <laughs> exhaust. But we got other generators like this guy down here, little Honda 2000. We're just trying to figure out ways to maybe keep the farm going if we do lose power for a few days. Hopefully it doesn't happen. This thing has such a nasty bark to it. Scott's putting a little muffler on it. He just put together. Might be a little hot. So we'll get that on there, and then I'm gonna weld these wheels on the back side of this frame, put a couple handles on it, that way it's a little easier to wheel around than using that weird dolly thing that we had. So, little things, make it simpler. Yeah, that's better. Little leg arms magic there. Let's fire up to see if it's any quieter. Give this thing a start. Oh, I turned the gas off. No more gas to it. But it was quieter. It helped a little bit. Yeah, it's not quite as much of a bark as it used to be. Sweet. What do you think? Nice little handles there to carry that baby around. Some wheels on the end. Got the exhaust fixed up by leg arms. Runs like a champ, just needs a little bit of gas. Well, we're this much closer to being ready for the storm, except for... That's more like it. So we were in town getting some parts and a couple things to get our generator hooked up to our grid at our farm, just in case we lost power in the next couple days with a crazy snowstorm that's coming. We ran into Harry, and Harry's like, I got a generator, you guys want it? If you can get it running, you can have it. Okay. <laughs> So we're uh, in his backyard and we're getting this old Continental. It's a six cylinder Continental. I have no idea of the year. It's, uh, it's got magnetos in it, so it's not sparking at the moment, but it cranks over real nice. It's got good fuel. So if we can get it running, we're gonna take it home. And you know what, plug it in. Isn't that awesome? Let's just uh, see where this goes. I didn't bring my uh, camera gear with me, so I've got my phone doing the video in right now, which brings back old memories using my phone to do everything. But this is cool, his backyard's uh, got the museum in Shelby here, and they got some old train cars and a bunch of really old farm equipment on the other side of those things. That's always pretty cool. I like seeing old iron. I noticed when you were tapping the starter, it was automatically pressing that down. Oh, it was? Yeah, I'd hold it down and then back. Oh yeah, that's a nice... Should I check the oh, I spark see. again? Yeah. Well, I had it running a minute ago, but uh, there's an issue with the there's the float or not the float the. The fuel strainer, that little glass, will leak an air in. It's not getting very good fuel flow to the carburetor, so we gotta get a fuel filter and get rid of that whole unit. Change that up a little bit, but <laughs> it sounded good when it ran for a second. All right, we're taking it. We brought the gooseneck back. I got a better camera. And we got the winch, the 
the cable, we got the ramps, it's on a skid, so we're just gonna winch it right up on the top of the trailer, get it back to the farm where its new home is gonna be Welker Farms, and uh, we're gonna get that baby running nice and strong. So Scott had a good idea. We're gonna use a plasma cutter. We're just gonna cut two rectangle slots on either side of this channel right here. That way we can take the forks on the skid steer and punch right through, pick the whole unit up, move it where we need it for the time being until eventually we might put it on some kind of trailer so we can move it around quick. But we're gonna get it poles cut so we can use the forks to get it off this, put it in the shop, and then we can start working on it in the heated shop while the storm's moving in. Let's see if we can get this thing purring a little better, more consistent. Got issues definitely with this uh, strainer here. It's leaking fuel, gaskets are bad, that needs fixed. Need some work probably from the electronics and the carburetor, there's a couple things in there that's not quite right. But with all that done, new oil put in it, new coolant, and uh, leg arm's behaving himself, we'll be good. Well, we drained the coolant and the engine oil. I was trying to catch the coolant and well, a hose came off that was up above from the one I was trying to take off and the coolant went everywhere. So there's still some leaking on the ground, but we got that fixed. It's inside here, under the brute. I got a light up top. I'm gonna start going through. I'm gonna add more oil to it, add coolant to it, fix the fuel system. Leg arms is gonna work on some of the electrical stuff. Hopefully we'll get this thing fired up so it'll run good. And then, then we'll start testing the generator side of things and make sure that the generator is operating like it should, as well as the engine generator. It's not an alternator, it's a generator. Make sure it's charging the battery correctly. So we'll just kind of go through and just work our way through this machine to where we think it's, hey, ready to run our farm when the power maybe goes out. Maybe. I put some uh, 10 w 30 oil in it. I couldn't figure out what kind of oil this thing uses. It doesn't say anywhere. I almost put 1540 in it, but for wintertime operation, we'll just go with 1030. Oil's gotten a lot better over the years, so I think it'll be good. As long as it gets that 25 pounds of oil pressure we probably want. Coolant's topped off, took four gallons, wasn't that bad. Leg arms been messing with the, with the sediment bowl. I think he's got it for, won't leak anymore. We got a gas tank. We're just gonna try to get this thing running. Then we'll start testing to make sure the generator side of things is working because that's kind of the whole point of having to run an engine is to power that. So we'll try, we'll see what happens. Let's find out. Well, fuel flow to this thing might be hindering it from running full throttle. So we haven't got a tank on it yet. It's just basically filling the line full of gas. Hopefully I have enough in the sediment bowl to keep it running, but it might need more than that. So we're gonna put a little more in it here.
Well, the very rear cylinder definitely has got carbon issues. Something's wrong with it. It's actually the spark plug right here. We tested it and there was a spark on that. So either this is just so carboned over, it can't even spark. And so it's just accumulating more. But looking at these plugs, they need replaced. They're, they're not good. So we'll get new plugs, um, put some sea foam through this thing. <clears throat> That'll help. It ran pretty good though. He did have to have the choke on the whole time. So something's not still quite tuned properly. But when we get new plugs, we'll check. Maybe the carburetor needs some more tweaks. Maybe we need to order a carb kit, but that was sweet, it ran. Isn't that pretty cool? We don't know yet if any of this is functioning, but the engine side, solid for being an engine that's well over 50 years old. So Leg Arms went in the back and he found a whole set of plugs that match these old ones in our storage and they're brand new, never used. And dad was just starting to clean the old ones. All right, new plugs are in, cleaned up. We're gonna try her again, go ahead. Probably about 50 degrees cooler than the rest of them. Which one? But but it's hot. It'll probably wake itself those, up. Those were approaching that 350, 400 degrees again, and this one was like, well, not quite. They were like barely 300. This one was like 250, 270. Well, it's getting some explosions. It's, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's burning it's, now. It's, uh, Before it couldn't even spark, the gap was completely. I bet you that thing's gonna wake itself up after running. Yeah, it just needs to get that carbon. So we'll, we'll put cool. some sea foam through it, clean that carbon up. Determine the carburetor has given us a little bit of issues. There actually is rebuild kits for this carburetor, but since it takes a while to get and the storm's coming tomorrow, we're gonna go ahead and just try to keep this thing going, hopefully tonight. So they're working on it. That was good progress. We're gonna shut down for the night. We'll pick this up uh, sometime. Tomorrow maybe when the snow's coming down or maybe next week, we'll figure it out. But we do have that to do and that's coming up here real soon. And so it begins. about two inches on the ground. Only like 18 to go. It'll be fun. Get a snowmobile out. And this guy. Snow isn't so bad. Unless you're still harvesting. Then snow is terrible. And I feel bad for those guys. But hopefully this comes and goes and the crop isn't laying completely on the ground and they can pick it up. All right, I'm gonna keep working on this thing. Cause you know what? It's fun and it's here and it's a good time to do it. And then the next up is the bud. So let's get to work. Well, we're still tinkering with this uh, generator here. Leg arms just went through a lot of the wiring on this side, just kind of cleaned up a couple things. We found that one of the breakers that runs the 110 outlet was popping. Every time you started the generator up, we tested it. Sure enough, it's faulty. So we got a new breaker in there. Right now we got the fuel tank in the front. It's just a 30 gallon drum barrel. It came with this thing. It just wasn't hooked up. So we mounted on the front, running steel line over. Leg arms just putting a new inline filter as well as a primer because the primer on the fuel pump on this was kind of sketchy. That. So that way we should have good prime, good filtration to the engine. So we're about ready to fire it up here. Got new plugs, new gas, and uh, ready to roll. And then hopefully we can test and see if this side's working. We haven't quite gotten to that point yet. So let's try it. Day two of early Montana storm. Let's go take a look and see what we're dealing with in here. Well, it's not terribly cold. It's about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little wet. Uh, the snow is heavy. It's been melting as it's been settling. So it's not like two feet of snow like they were saying, but some areas are two feet of snow. I got my dry shods on. So I'm handling the snow pretty good. They're like muck boots, just really awesome. Liking them so far. And uh, we're gonna keep going to town on the generator here. All we got left to do is the fuel pump that came with the engine. <coughs> it's got a primer built into it. It's not working very good, we don't really like it. So we're just gonna bypass the whole system, put an electric fuel pump on there. Right now we have it tied into the old fuel pump, but after it started leaking some gas, it's like, eh, just not use it. So 
Put like your inline fuel pump in, get that set up. Then we'll hopefully be able to fire this girl up. Then we're gonna plug some devices into the box and see if we get some power out of it. And if we do, awesome, let's go to work. Because this engine has a push button start and didn't have an electric fuel pump on it, we're gonna need a switch. Playground wants to put a switch in there so you'll turn the fuel pump on and off as you need. So there'll be a kill button as well as a toggle switch for the fuel pump. And you'll hear the fuel pump running if you shut the engine off. So I'm just digging through our drawer here of goodies. We'll see if I can find a switch that'll work good for this. Overkill. Ooh. It's even a deer key. Eh. I don't want to tarnish this thing. I think that'll work. Fuel pump's in, switch is in, soldered. The cutoff switch for the engine is being, well, the new wire's put on it because the old one was pretty rotten. And then um, I think we'll run around, we'll clean the tools up around this thing a little bit, look a little nicer, and then try to fire her up and then test the generator and see if we get power to it. And if we do, awesome. I don't know if this is how you guys clean up your tool mess, but uh, this is what I like to do. Just throw everything in one pan, everything. Doesn't matter what it is, you throw it in there. And then sort it on the bench later. It's only one trip. Quick rundown of what's going on here. So it has new spark plugs, new engine oil, new coolant, new fuel pump, new fuel filter, new wiring. Scott's got new underwear. No, I forgot. Oh, never mind. Yeah. That's... But I got new socks. Oh, he's got new socks. I got okay. New socks, yeah. um, redid new, new breaker in the 110 in the box here, and a new battery. That's old, but newer than that one was on it. And new gas in the gas tank. Let's start it. Let's see what happens. It's making power. Our cutoff switch isn't working. It's the old one that was on there. It's not killing it. It's always turned the fuel pump off. Well, that works to turn it off. It never has to prime itself every time, but it shouldn't take long. The thing is we want a quick shut off just in case. Oh, that's awesome. It generates electricity, engine purrs. Okay, let's see if we can fix the switch and make it work better. Well, we just fired up, ran it again, did a check again, and the 220 is working great. We idled the engine RPMs back to 1,550 RPMs. The generator says 1,800 on it, but it purrs at 1,500 pretty good. So, and it's got a voltage regulator on there, so you can increase the voltage as needed. So we just turned the regulator up. I'm sure someone out there knows exactly how these things run and knows where you got to set them. But so far, it seems to be running really good. Just need a new voltmeter on here. This doesn't seem to work, and we haven't figured out the three phase on this yet, but. Works good. So, so far, storm has not killed our power. So uh, I guess we don't need to use it, but it's a good backup when we do. So, but again, guys, thanks for watching the channel. And uh, next time, hopefully there won't be snow on the ground and it'll be melted and we might be uh, sewing some winter wheat or building grain bins, who knows what we'll do, something. But thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to the channel and like the video and leave a comment. And uh, God bless and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.